Hi everybody, this video is for section 2.2, normal distributions, and the idea of the normal distribution is one of the most useful ideas we'll study in statistics. Not only will we use basic ideas here in this section, but it's going to come back again in lots of later sections, so it's good to get the basics down now. Two goals in this section, first to understand properties of normal curves, what are they all about, and then we'll solve a problem involving a normal curve. And we have an example here from the golf world. On the driving range, Rory McIlroy, he's a golfer, practices his swing with a particular club by hitting many, many golf balls. When Rory hits his driver, the distance the ball travels follows a normal distribution with a mean of 315 yards and standard deviation 20 yards. What percent of Rory's dri uh, drives travel at least 300 yards? So the first thing we have to unpack here is this idea of a normal distribution. There's lots of information here. But let's take it apart piece by piece. The idea of the normal distribution means that if we were to plot all of Rory McIlroy's drives, we should expect they would have this approximate shape. Most of his drives will be in the middle, around 315 yards. But he might hit some farther, and the distances will start to tail off, and there'll be less and less of them. Conversely, we're going to see some that are less than 315 yards, but the amount and the frequency of those will tail off in the opposite direction. And it's important to note here, we will never have anything in statistics that has an exactly normal distribution. Normal distributions are somewhat idealized distribution, distributions. But an approximately normal distribution is a powerful idea that we're going to use in statistics to find proportions. So first of all, a couple properties here. Any normal distribution is described by a normal density curve. Remember that means it, it's always above the x-axis and it has an area of one beneath it. Also, a normal distribution is completely described by two things, the population mean and the population standard deviation. And notice the symbols I'm using here. Since I'm talking about a population, I will use the symbol mu to represent the population mean and sigma for the population standard deviation. And since there's a lot in these problems to unpack, we have some common notation we use for problems like this. Helpful summary notation here. We use capital N to mean a normal distribution, and in parentheses after it, we put the mean and the standard deviation in the problem that we're talking about. So for this particular problem, if we let X represent the distribution of all of Rory McElroy's drives, we can use this notation to represent the distribution of his drives. We say that X has an approximately normal distribution, the mean of 315, and a standard deviation of 20. So what are normal distributions used for? Well, they often describe things in nature. Think heights, weights. It can oftentimes represent repeated measurements from similar populations. Think if I took measurements perhaps of M&Ms. They don't all have the same weight, but they might fan out in a normal distribution. Test scores, things like SAT scores, while not exactly normal, end up having this bell-shaped curve to them. And again, we're going to see them later in the course in more interesting and sophisticated ways. Okay? So we have our notation here, and now let's start to think about the problem a little bit. So now that I know this problem has a normal, normal distribution, I want to draw a rough sketch here. So I have 315 in the middle, and we use the standard deviation as our counter. 315, 20 more in each direction, and I usually go three standard deviations in both directions. That's usually sufficient. And the first thing we see here is we start to shade it in, we see that about 50% of Rory's drives will be 315 yards or more, and about 50% will be below that, because we can use the density curve to represent the percentage and the probability here. So how do we find some other probabilities? Well, there's a couple of nice little rules here, and we'll use technology as well, but one easy rule to remember is the 6895 rule. Here's what the 6895 rule says. That in a normal distribution with mean mu and standard deviation sigma, about 68% of the observations will lie within one standard deviation of the mean. And about 95% of all observations will fall within two standard deviations of the mean. It looks kind of like this. We have a little sketch for it here. But that means in anything that has an approximately normal distribution, we can expect that about 95% of the observations will be in that middle part of the curve within two standard deviations. It's possible we'll have some unusual occurrences out there in the tail, about 2.5% in each direction. There is a third number there, 99.7%. I'll be honest, I don't remember that one too often. 68, 95 are the numbers that I really remember. And that does have a short name. It's oftentimes called the empirical rule, just meaning a rule that is easy to remember, the 68, 95 rule, the short and snappy rule. Okay, so let's look at Rory Mac McElroy here. Well, this means the 6895 rule tells us that about 68% of Rory's drives are within one standard deviation of the mean. 
Here, that's between 295 yards and 335 yards. And about 95% of his drives are between 275 yards and 355 yards. Two standard deviations from the mean. It's possible he'll have some that travel farther than 355 and some that will be less than 275, but 95% in the middle. But look at the problem we have here. We want to know about 300 yards. How are we going to tackle that? Well, here's the idea that gets us here. We're going to use something called the standard normal distribution. Throughout this, you may have seen me talking about number of standard deviations away from the mean. Well, that brings us back to something from the last section, z-score. So the standard normal distribution is the normal distribution with a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. So we have 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. And if we understand z-score, we can take any context that has an approximately normal distribution and translate it to the standard normal curve. So for any normally distributed variable, we can compute z-score to assess position on the standard normal curve. And remember the z-score formula, which is given here, but now notice I'm filling it in with our formal symbols for population mean and standard deviation. So let this, let's fit this into the, to the uh, Goff drive problem. Again, I want to find the probability that Rory's drives travel at least 300 yards. So I'm going to make a sketch here. And I see a shaded area, but I don't know the area there. So the proportion of Rory's drives which travel over 300 yards is the same as, if we find the z-score, the proportion of his drives to the right of a z-score of negative 0.75. Those two ideas, having a drive above 300 yards and a z-score above negative 0.75, have equivalent answers. They have the same shaded area. And now at this point, we'll use a couple devices to find the area. Graphing calculators for the most part. We can use tables. Online websites will do it as well. So for this one, we're just going to look at the answer here. Uh, the answer turns out to be 0.7734. In class, we'll learn how to calculate that. But for now, just understand that the shaded area gives us that percentage.